Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from Slide Nerd. In this video, let's continue and try to see what are the different flavors of a navigation drawer. At this point, what we have is something like this on both our free lollipop and our lollipop device here on the right hand side. As you can see, this is an orange status bar indicating that it's a lollipop device. Now, let's see how we can get the toolbar at the top and have the navigation drawer below it instead of this weird layout which we get where the navigation drawer completely overlaps the toolbar behind it. So let's go here inside our layout folder and try to create a different layout file. But before we do that, let me actually make you guys understand what we are going to do. So take a look here at this image which shows you the structure of a drawer layout. A drawer layout has two children as we have seen this earlier as well. There's a main content which is always visible. There's a navigation drawer which, is can, be, which can be either a simple layout or it can be a fragment containing a layout. The way we are going to have the toolbar being always visible is by ensuring that the drawer layout is not the root layout of our XML file. If you go right now and if you examine here in our activity underscore main or XML, the drawer layout is the root, which is why if we click here, as you can see, this rectangle represents your navigation drawer fragment here. And if you click here, that represents the complete relative layout which contains our toolbar and our text view. Take a look at here. If I click here again, it goes to the relative layout automatically in Android Studio. And as you can see very well, this relative layout, this complete area is going to, over, going to get overlapped by this area when the navigation drawer is moved on top of it. How we can change it is very simple. We pull this app bar or toolbar outside the drawer layout. In other words, we make a separate layout file first. So now at this point, I'm making the layout file in Android Studio and I've given it a name activity underscore main underscore app bar and I can add either a linear layout or a relative layout as the root of my file. In other words, I'll take a linear layout just for now and see what happens. If I click OK here, it's going to create a separate layout file. If we go to the text here, we have our linear layout. And of course, this is a vertical linear layout. Just press Ctrl Alt L to reformat stuff here. And inside this, there are going to be two children. One of them is going to be our app bar from our activity underscore main.xml. In other words, we'll take this here and we'll paste this over here. So there you see, that's our app bar. The other element is going to be our drawer layout. In other words, we take the entire thing here from activity underscore main.xml and we are going to simply paste it inside activity underscore main underscore app bar dot xml below the toolbar inside the linear layout and of course at this point we need to make some changes first of all we don't need the xml in this tools here or the xml in this android here since we already have it defined with the linear layout now the other thing that we need to take care of is of course to remove the tools context here and then we need to remove the app bar which is getting duplicated inside we remove the text view as well and in place of this relative layout we can have a frame layout inside this drawer layout to represent our first content, which is our main content. Here, we can simply go here and we can say frame layout here. So at this point, it says rendering problems, then please use this. Let's try to click on that and see what it does. And as you can see, it puts tools layout is at the rate layout fragment navigation drawer over here. And at this point, what we have is the app bar here. Take a look at this carefully. There's our linear layout, which is our root, which has an orientation of vertical. This linear layout has two children, which are obviously going to be vertical. The first is the app bar at the top. The second is the complete drawer layout, which is this widget that we see here. Now, the drawer layout itself has two children. One is the main content, which is our frame layout here. And other is the fragment, which is our fragment layout here. So now I understand that you guys have understood exactly what this thing looks like. We can have a relative layout as the root as well. There's no restriction on what you can use. I have used a linear layout here. Now let's go back to our main activity. And of course, we need to make sure that the IDs are same because if I switch to using this layout, it's going to crash if I don't have the proper IDs everywhere. So this frame layout, which is our container, our main contents uh, layout inside our drawer layout, we can add whatever you want inside this frame layout programmatically or here in XML itself. Right now, I have nothing to add here. Hence, I've kept it blank over here. So at this point, if I go to main activity here and if I change the layout file and I go here and simply say r.layout.activity underscore main underscore app bar, let's see what happens if we run the code. So at this point, both my 
uh, emulators are running the pre lollipop and the post one and i have used the new layout inside the activity underscore main if i go here and if i take the emulator now i simply click here and take a look at that bam there's our navigation drawer which is coming under the toolbar now because we changed the layout and it happens the same for your lollipop as well which means we have successfully implemented the second layout of our navigation drawer just by tweaking a few things inside the layout file which we originally had for our navigation drawer so at this point let's take a look at the third way of styling a toolbar or navigation drawer it's right here in this image over here when, the, when you open the navigation drawer, the toolbar is going to dim up. In other words, you set the alpha down. At the same time, when you close it, the alpha is again restored back to full 1.0. Now, if you take a look at this image or this GIF image over here, you will notice that it's animated. It's not like the alpha changes in one stroke. Rather, it changes over a period of time. So, if you're a beginner, you'll go and you'll be tempted to use these two methods for doing that. It's on drawer opened and on drawer closed you'll think that okay inside on drawer open i'll have an animation i'll load it keep the duration of the animation as one second or something but that's not such a good approach because the user may manually open the navigation drawer and he still expects to see the animation change according to the speed at which he is opening the drawer in other words on drawer open it gets called once the drawer is completely open and on drawer closed is called once the drawer has been completely closed after it was open now there's a third method here which i haven't shown you yet and let's take a look at that method if you go to our action bar drawer toggle class here you'll go down and you'll notice this method on drawer slide if you open that it says if you do not use your action bar drawer toggle instantly, you should call this method through your own listener object. Well, let's go here to drawer layout or drawer listener and see what it actually does. Here, if you take a look at this method on drawer slide, it says called when a drawer's position changes. So the drawer view that was moved is being passed to you, and there is this slide offset which goes from 0 to 1. 1 meaning that the drawer is completely open and zero meaning that drawer is completely closed let's go here inside our action bar drawer toggle which is this object we created over here we go here and override the other method which is on drawer open on drawer close and then there is our on drawer slide here so inside the on drawer slide we don't need to have a super i'll simply show you what this value of slide offset looks like and what it does here so inside the on drawer slide, I've simply added a log statement to print the value of the slide offset. Now let's take our emulator and try to actually see what happens when we try moving the drawer. Take a look at the log cat over here. So here I manually start pulling the drawer by swiping slowly and take a look at those values. As I go all the way here to 1.0, the slide offset keeps increasing as you can notice over here. And here I come to 1.0. There you go now when i go back that is a slide back it's going to decrease to 0.0, .0. take a look at that again if i go down here and first let me let me go here and set my drawer now if i start moving the log cat has started moving down already and of course it came back because i didn't slide properly i go all the way to the start here and you will see the values fall down all the way to 0.0, .0. and this is exactly what we need for animating our stock we can simply use this value of slide offset to set the alpha so at zero so the idea behind take a look at this image that we have over here when the navigation drawer is fully closed at that time the value of slide offset is 0, 0.0 but at that time the value of alpha here is 1.0 and when the navigation drawer is fully open the slide offset value is 1.0 but the alpha decreases very sharply maybe to 0.3 or 0.4 or something like that let's take a look at how we can do this we can simply go here and we can say toolbar which is our toolbar object we want to change the alpha value we can simply say set alpha and we can say slide offset here but this is not the right way to do it because when the slide offset is zero we want alpha to be maximum because the drawer is closed the toolbar should be fully visible so we can put one minus slide offset here let's just experiment and see what happens when we do this just run this here if we go here and if we start dragging the drawer you will see that the toolbar is slowly fading at the top 
as we go further and further it goes all the way down to zero when we reach the end now we don't want this at this point the user is like whoa what the hell happened you don't want to completely make this thing disappear rather you want to have a very small amount of alpha value here so that the title and the icon and other things over here are barely visible and that can be simply done by having an if condition in other words we are going to decrease the value of alpha only as long as the slight offset is not like 0.6 over here now take a look at this condition which i have specified in this case here what happens is the toolbar's alpha is going to change only as long as the navigation drawer is not 0.6 now let's imagine initially it is at 0.0 slight offset is 0.0 alpha is going to be 1 minus 0.0 that's going to be fully 1.0 now what happens when the slight offset is 0.5 at that time alpha is 1 minus 0.5 which is half the value right what happens when the slight offset is 0.6 or 0.59 in this case because there's a less than symbol over here so in that case alpha would be 1 minus 0.59 or whatever it is this comes around 0.4 roughly but anything more than that in other words when the slight offset goes to 0.7 nothing happens 0.8 nothing happens because the if condition is going to be false in all those cases let's run this and take a look at whether we get the desired effect or not so at this point things are running and as i said initially slide offset is zero as i start dragging it's gonna slowly start fading out but after 0.6 when the slide offset proceeds the alpha is not going to go down further because i have restricted it and take a look it opens completely and this is faded again the same logic applies when i go back which means i'm here at 1.0 for the slide offset currently i go to 0.9 nothing happens 0.8 nothing happens 0.7 nothing 0.6 and you can see that things have started brightening up again because when slide offset is 0.4 then toolbars alpha value is 1 minus 0.4 which is 60 percent and as it slide offset goes down toolbars alpha value goes up take a look at it it's restored completely back to 1.0 so this is how you can achieve the effect of darkening the toolbar if you want to do it in your app so hopefully you guys have understood the different flavors of the navigation drawer and how we can play with them. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. And of course, if you know a different way of doing things, do let me know as well in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. 